Let's get this out of the box. This is the Boss Game M4 Mini PC. You're going to want to stick around because it's got a few features that kind of set it apart from a lot of the competition, especially at this price range. So it's got the Ryzen 7 8745HS, which also has the 780M GPU integrated. This is not any normal, you know, integrated GPU. It's okay. If you want to think about this somewhere in your head, think about the Steam Deck and then think faster than the Steam Deck. And that's kind of the performance you're going to be getting with one of these because it's very similar architecture, just a little bit faster, a little bit fancier, very similar to last generation as well. Not much has changed, but it's just a little more efficient. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30 and we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go. $23.22. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense. No copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm gonna grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro all right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. You know, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, kind of whatever, because I saw that price and I was like, that's just too much. I'll take a look at it, but that's just too much. And then they brought the sale price down or they brought the regular price down and we have this good sale price. At this price, it's very similar to some other stuff that I've just looked at. Uh, let me just show you by name here. I just looked at this one. This is the Trig Key, uh, Key R8. Very well made. Very, very good machine. It's $10 cheaper. It's got the same stuff. Honestly, it's like, a tiny bit faster. I don't know why, because they're the same parts. They should be running about the same speed, but this one is a little bit faster and it's quieter. However, the Boss Game M4 has some stuff that the Trig Key does not that might interest you. What might that be? Well, it's got two LAN ports, both 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I'll show you what they are in just a second inside hardware hardware info. I've been doing too many videos in a row. And then on the side, that is Oculink. What is Oculink? Well, I'm about to tell you. Oculink is different than USB 4. It's different than Thunderbolt. It's basically plugging directly into the PCI Express bus. Think of it as like just a cable that allows you to install another GPU or a dock or something, but it's just like plugging it up to a motherboard. It's the only solution that is like that. The other ones, even Thunderbolt, are not as perfect as Oculink. So Oculink really is the solution if you want to have a dock at home with a GPU on it and have a mini PC that you take to and from. That's a huge thing that separates this from the competition. And at this price, it's kind of like, well, that's interesting. How do they get that as well as everything else at this price? So let's go ahead and go through the specs. Then I'm going to play a few indie games and recommend some stuff that you can play on this. We'll do our benchmarks. And then I've got some secrets for you. I might even eat cake with you all. So we've got that Ryzen 7 8745HS. It's eight cores, 16 threads, 16 megabytes of L3 cache. Max turbo is 4.9 gigahertz. And compared to last generation, I'm noticing that this one's about as fast as the stuff that was turboing up to 5.1 or 5.2. So it's a little more efficient. Default TDP is 54 watts. This one comes pre-installed with 32 gigabytes of memory, 5,600 megahertz. Then we have a Kingston M.2. People always ask me about the network port. So let's take a look at those. We've got a Realtek RTL8125 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Uh, the same thing for the second 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. And then the Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX210. Our M.2 is a Kingston branded drive. Let's go ahead and give it a test right now. It's PCI Express Gen 4x4. The idle is a little bit warm on this Kingston, but let's see, it's, you know, that's fine, but it is warmer than I would expect. I expect it to be in the 50s or 40s, but idling in the 60s. So let's see how it is once this test gets up and running. The M.2 speeds that we're getting right here are okay. Max out at 72, so the temperatures are completely fine. Just the idle, that's fine, I guess. I would expect it to be down into the 50s a little bit, especially with that thermal pad, but sure. Not much difference between the idle and the full-on, you know, max load. 
but these speeds are not that much different than PCI Express Gen 3x4, so this is on the slower end for PCI Express Gen 4x4. Still, it's gonna feel snappy for most people, but just know that this is not like, just know that this is not like a ludicrous speed drive. The IOPS, 144 for the, for the reads, and then the write's a little sluggish on this, 96,000. So it'll be snappy, but there are definitely much faster PCI Express Gen 4x4 drives out there. The dimensions are 130 by 129 by 46 millimeters in inches, 5.12 by 5.08 by 1.81. We got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2. The GPU again is the 780M and uh, the frequency on that is 2600 megahertz. Let's take a look at those ports. We've got USB 3.2, 10 gigabits per second there. We've got two of those, those are type A. Nice speed on those. And then type C right there, that's USB 4. That'll also allow you to hook up multiple displays. We got some more displays on the back, but yeah, USB 4 is some wild stuff. That plus Oculink, that's a lot. Audio jack for a headphone and microphone, then a power button. Then on the back, we have two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. That supports 4K at 60. If you're gonna be doing any really fancy stuff, use the display port, which is 4K at 60 Hertz, or one of the USB 4. Uh, those are on the front. So if, if you're gonna be hooking up a bunch, you might wanna mount this behind your monitor or something, which you can do. You can, you know, it's got a Visa mount, so you can mount it on the back of your monitor and then just plug up as many things as you want to. Also, we have USB 2.0, two of those for all your peripherals, if you prefer. Let's get it naked. So we've got two layers of protection right here. The first, just a standard bottom case, it's all plastic. And then you uh, get underneath the hood and we have a half plastic, half metal thing going on here. We've got a metal heat shield that's gonna go right on top of your M.2. Then there's a fan, but it's another little tray that you have to pull out. And then we have access underneath the hood and you can see we've got an M.2 on the top there. It's the Kingston I was telling you about. Then your Wi-Fi is just beside that. And on top of that is another PCI Express Gen 4x4 slot. And below that, we have two sticks of RAM already installed, 32 gigabytes in total. And they do have some thermal pads on top. Now there's a fan right there that'll be blowing on those thermal pads. So that should help cool down the RAM that's in the dual channel configuration. Good job there. Notice that this is just pure plastic. It's just hard plastic. That's all. See the Oculink port? It's right up there on the top. So right there, it looks almost like a USB port right there on the side, but that's your Oculink port. All right, now we're gonna play some games and then put it through its paces and just see what it can do. Let's have a look at Unigen Superposition. Crazy benchmark, all kinds of stuff flying all over. The DirectX mode, medium 1080p, and average 37.39, actually really good. This is extremely demanding. Minimum 31.51, and our overall score is 4,999. Couldn't do 5,000, could we? I'd probably get 5,000 if I run it again, but I ain't gonna do it. All right, Unigine Valley looking pretty good here. 70.5 FPS, a score of 2948, minimum 34.4. Again, this is running at 1080p on the high setting, DirectX 11. One of the fastest I've tested is the Rioton Alloy 9. And as you can see here, that one achieved 74.7 that does have a bigger CPU, but still the 780M. Now, this is a more expensive part, so that's why I wanted to test it. We're only a few FPS behind this one. I know this is a seven instead of an eight, but it does have more cores, more threads and all that because it's a Ryzen 9, and it has a little bit more when it comes to the frequency advantage, but still pretty close when it comes to the overall FPS score. Cyberpunk's looking pretty good here on medium, 44.22 FPS with a minimum of 38.35. Very stable performance, not dropping below 38. That's, I mean, look at the average versus the minimum. That's pretty clean performance to me. I think you could uh, play it this way, but if you wanna like, you know, have a little bit better performance when it comes to the action sequences, you can crank it down to low. Also, I wanna note that I was running this with the FSR on the quality setting. If you put it on auto, it might be a little bit better, but I like quality. It's about as low as I'll go with FSR. All right, so let's try out the low setting, shall we? I want you to behold the low setting. It looks better than most games on medium and high. So I think low is still an extremely viable way to play Cyberpunk. And our average is 51.71 FPS with a minimum of 44. So it's gonna feel very smooth while you're playing this game. And remember, this is an RPG first, action game second. So I think it's totally fine to be playing it like this. I would play it on low, just like this. Let's give Baldur's Gate 3 a try. Um, I'm doing medium right now and uh, yeah. Nope, we're gonna have to go with low, I believe. Yeah, this is a little bit too slow because, you know, here um, it's gonna run a lot faster than it is when you get to like the cities and stuff. So kind of 30 FPS. If you don't care about that and you just wanna play, because it is turn-based, it doesn't require a lot of 
fast action or anything, then you can definitely play it like this. Take a look at Bygone Dreams. Now this is an action adventure game. It's got some graphics that kind of remind me of an old PS2 or early Xbox game. Even the loading screen there looks like, well, maybe like an old Windows XP or maybe even late 90. Now nah, it's too fancy for late 98. So this game's really, they say, designed for a controller, but whatever. Uh, all right, we're gonna try medium setting. Apply, let's see how this looks. I mean, if ultra looked like that, what does medium look like? I feel like medium looks more correct. So now we're getting like 57 FPS and it feels correct. There we go, give me that. Give me all these things. What's this? I'll take that too, give, me this. give it to me. Medium makes us feel a lot like an old Windows like 98 XP game. I should probably get some stamina, huh? It's getting more fun as I learn how it works. I dodged that, come on. You. You can't interrupt your attacks with a dodge, it seems. It's not exactly my kind of game. I'm not nostalgic for these kind of games. I didn't have a PS2 or an Xbox and didn't really play a lot of the third-person action adventure games. I was mostly playing RPGs, and I guess the era that I'm most nostalgic for is like old FPS games and RPGs, but it's pretty cool, so and they really want you to use a controller. Anyway, you can check out Bygone Dreams if this hit a few nostalgic notes for you or, you know, it's your kind of game. Let's have a look at the CPU, and you can see they put it right on the top of the list here, but you know, it is a very fast CPU. Now, just note that these down here are a few generations old, so if you really want to compare this, do a test on your own with Cinebench R23, see how it stacks up against your current CPU, and see if this mobile CPU is faster than yours. The single core speed, 1715. Looking at the multi-core speed, we've got 15186, and you can see right there where it stacks up. So it's not like an extremely fast CPU, but this, with the combination of the graphics card, are a very fast combination. Looking at Geekbench, our single core score is 2548, and the multi-core is 12749. Scroll down here, you can pause if you want to see any of the, you know, specific scores right there, especially Clang. This one's got 101.9 Kleins. One day I'll look that up and figure out what it means, but I like not knowing. And then over here, OpenCL 26680, and here are the individual scores right there. Okay, we're at the 20 minute mark and we are staying under 90. I feel like that's a pretty good, you know, thing here. So let's also just see how loud this is. This is how loud it is in the room with nothing going on. All right, let's see how loud the actual unit is. Right beside the unit we're getting, yeah, it's really quiet. It does have a higher pitched, you know, sound. You can hear this but compared to most many PCs, I feel like this is one of the quieter units that I've tested. So not only is it staying under 90, which for a mini PC uh, with this much power, I think is really good, but it's also relatively quiet. So there you have it. Now, if you don't need Oculink and you don't want any of the extras and you don't need two, you know, 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet ports, the you know oculink and the dual gigabit ethernet you know if all that kind of stuff is important to you then the boss game is kind of a no-brainer especially at this price point just good stuff but if you don't care then i don't know maybe it's a little bit of a discussion we should have anyway that's the boss game m4 it's a good mini pc i like it but it's got good parts and they did some good stuff with it so cheers so i've got a few things over on epic pants i'm getting rid of parting with a few things over here hey you want a copy of windows 98 this is sealed sealed in the box Got one left, I sold a couple and I'm keeping one for myself. Also the hardware here, all the Phoenix stuff, including this beautiful thing right here. Yes, this, this is on sale right now. Coupon code is happy hardware. And everything over here in the hardware section is half price, well everything in the Phoenix section. So you'll get this for 20 bucks at checkout. I'm just telling everybody here that makes the sale small. That way, um, you know, everyone who's watching this, you can go over there and grab those deals. Happy hardware, epicpants.com. I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.